Hello and welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We're still fighting with the cropping of images. Mm -hmm. So far, all we have is that we can have a cropped version of the file, just the file name. That's all we have so far. So what I want now is to start creating these variables here. So the first thing we're going to create is the, not the destination, but the source image so that we can have something to use here. So what I'll say is, uh, let's create a source image. So source image is going to be the, um, uh, the image resource that I create using the file name. So to create one, we're just going to say image. There's a function for that, right? Image create. That's what it's called. Image create. But there's a lot of image creates here. So you see this image create, just, just the image create part. Oh, sorry. What did I do here? Yes, there's image create from GD, from GD2. Uh, now, this is what I want you to pay attention. There's image create from a GIF. There's one from a JPEG. There's one from PNG. And there's image create from a string. So this string could be a something like a best 64 string or something like that. And this one is PNG file. JPEG. So you see there are different functions for depending on what type of um, uh, what type of image you are dealing with, right? So let's start with image create from JPEG. Mm -hmm. So obviously the file name should be given and we'll create a file using that. Great. Oh, I need the equal sign. Sorry. But the thing is, we don't know what the file extension will be. Let's depend on the file extension and create a specific image depending on that. So I'm just going to say um, I can use a switch statement, right? I can say switch. <clears throat> or I can use if statements if you want. That's entirely up to you. If the value here is JPEG, JPG, like that, then let's do something like this. Let's move that there. So we need the break so that it doesn't go to the next one. Uh -huh. So let me just, uh, and then we should have a default. If we can't figure out what it is, let's just default to trying the JPEG version, right? And then let's do a uh, duplicate. I will duplicate. Duplicate, yes. So this one is for the GIF and this one is for the PNG. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Now let's just change this part to GIF and let's change this one to PNG. Simple and straightforward, right? Mm -hmm. At least we know, regardless, at the end of the whole thing, we will have um at least an image now there's sometimes the file extension could be jpeg or jpeg like this so you have to be prepared for that as well uh, in which case i guess it's going to go to this yeah so i think it's okay but if you want to put an or statement because you can't do case jpeg or case uh something else you can't or can you maybe you can who knows I've never tried that. But what you can do though, is you can create two cases like this and just remove the break in between them and do that. So what will happen is if it's a JPEG, it will run this and it will run that as well. But this is not good because you'll be running it twice. So all you have to do is just remove these here so that you have two cases following each other. So you have case JPEG, and because there's no break after that, both will always run. So if the case is here, it will run this. If the case is here, it will run here, but then it will continue and run this as well. So this works very well. That's how you do all for cases, right? But in our case, the default is there. If it's not JPEG, it could be JPEG like so. And then it will, ah, wait a minute, actually, we should, um, 
we shouldn't actually do anything if none of these are found because this may cause an error somebody could send us a, a, a file that isn't an image so what we can do though is return the file name so i'm going to copy this and here if this happens let's just return the file name so here you're saying we are returning the cropped file version right but if it's none of this which means it's not a valid image then let's just return the original file name and forget about it okay that way we don't have an empty image in case it's actually a valid image so so far we have a source image okay very good now all we need to do uh, after this let me remove this echo here and this return for now so let's comment these guys so that you can remember what's going on here okay so create image resource yes and then here determine which side is longer uh, so we just say set cropping params okay so we need to know <clears throat> what cropping parameters we need but we also need a destination image now this destination image will depend on a few things so let me the destination image what we are trying to do let me explain this a little bit so let's go to paint here for a second so let's say we have an image like this so this image looks something like so and we want to crop it so instead of us creating um now keep in mind we don't know the width and height of this image right this image could be uh, let's say 4000 on this side pixels by uh, maybe 2000 right let's keep that in mind now what i want uh, eventually is a 600 by 600 pixel image as we have set here as the default now the problem is that if i decide to just get a 600 by 600 piece from this image it will be something like this because remember this is 4000 pixels this way it could even be higher so the problem is i'm just going to get a tiny slither of the image and that's not going to do right so we need a different approach here so what we would do instead is ask the question how many pixels are here or which of these two sides is smaller than the other right in this case the y is smaller the x is bigger because it's 4000 by 2000 so once we get this 2000 that's our base so what we're going to get from the original image is an image section of 2000 this way by another 2000 this other way okay this is going to effectively create a square image like so because 2000 here 2000 there so we get the smallest amount and then use that so 2000 by 2000 so this is a crop but the problem is we want to crop in the middle here and not on the side so what we do is the remaining section here we're just going to get 2000 and 4000 and subtract 2000 so the remaining section here is another 2000 right 2000 and then all we do is divide this by two to get half of it right so once we get half of that we get a 1000 right 1000 so this is 1000 and that is 1000 and all we need to do now is add this 1000 to the large section here which will effectively move this whole thing because if we have 1000 here then the whole cropping thing starts from there and then we're going to have something like this which means we'll get our image in the center now you can try the same thing with the image that is longer this way and it will work exactly the same because we'll find that the x is smaller so we'll use the x here and use the x there which will give us this and then all we need to do is divide the remaining portion of the y and then move this one portion to the top here and then this will move down like so so this is how we're going to be cropping these images into squares so hopefully this is understood now we need to know exactly the width of the image we are supposed to create because we're supposed we're not really cropping the original image we are creating a copy of the image 
and then we'll do a copy and paste on this image like so. This is why we are using the function copy image resampled, right? We are making a copy, but we'll do some stuff to it while copying it. That's why there's the resampled there, uh, but that's what copy image does. So it will get a piece of the original and send to the to another image that you create, which is the destination image. So here uh, I need to know the dimensions of the destination image because that depends on the original image itself on the short side of the image. But keep in mind that uh, we are telling it exactly what size to um, is the final destination file. So the file might be smaller like this, but still what we are going to do is tell it to get this corner and paste it here and then move all these pieces up to there. Just make sure that the final pixel is there and the same thing on the other side goes here and the other one goes there. That's really what we are trying to do. So we are squeezing a larger image into a smaller one. Okay, so enough of that theory. Let's do some practical. So we know that the size of the image is the square. So we're just going to get the size from here. Now we must make sure that size is actually a thing, right? So it's an integer because somebody can give a non-integer there, but that's entirely up to you. If you give a non-integer, you will cause errors. So just avoid that. Or what we can do is cast it as an int if we want. So what I would do here, I'll say original, uh, no, destination image, right? That's the one I want to deal with. So I want to create a destination image. I'll say is equal to uh, image create again. So we're creating a new image, but this one is not from any source. It's just an empty image. So image create. Uh, now the image create I'm looking for isn't here. Oh, there it is. Image create true color. That's the one. So it supplies a width and a height. So I know the width and the height are exactly the same because this is a square image. So the width is equal to size. The height is equal to size. So this effectively creates an image 600 by 600 because size is equal to currently 600. But I want to make sure that this is an int. So I'm just going to cast it as an int. That way I don't get problems. All right then. So now I have a destination image. I also have a source image, which is really cool. Mm -hmm. Now, the thing is, we need to supply the destination X and the destination Y. Now, since the destination X will always start from zero, that's the beginning, and the destination Y will start from zero. So it's just zero comma zero. That's it. That's where we are starting the copying from. And then we'll provide the destination height and the destination width, right? So let's come down here and let's provide those variables. So to start with, I'm going to provide these guys. Uh, the source X and Y are different, so I won't give them here. Let me give these ones that are zero. So let's assign zeros to variables that won't change, right? So the destination X is zero the destination y is also zero. That's because I want on the destination, I want to start at zero comma zero on pasting here, right at this corner right there. So that's why I'm putting those zeros. What else goes to zero? Now, what else we know is the destination height. We know that the height of the destination is the whole image, which is equal to size. Mm -hmm. So let's cast that as an int as well. So that's destination width and height. So copy those two, then we can give them a value because we know assign values. So we're not assigning zeros everywhere. So there we go. Destination height, similar to this. So I'm just going to copy this. We are casting that as an integer because pixels don't even have, uh, what's this? Decimals, right? So it should be an integer. So at least we have those. So what remains now is the 
source x and source y. This one is a little complex because the source x is here. You see there? Yeah, we need to know what this pixel is. And we need to know what the height is because if an image is 2000 down here, then the height is 2000. If the image is 3000, then the height is 3000. So these params that have remained depend on the original image. So we need now to do some calculations on that in order to, um, to get those values. Yes, yes. So let's copy these guys and let's put them here like so. Uh -huh. So let's put an equal sign. Let's put another equal sign. And let's get the last of this. That's a source width and source height. Yes. Once we have this, then our function will work just fine. Equals and equals like so. Very cool. Yes. Yes. Now, uh, the source X, now we'll need to do a bit of calculation here. So this is going to take a while. So let's do it in the next video because this one is already getting long.